Hello all, welcome to Docker Basics to Brilliance course. My name is Castro Kiran. In the last video, we have understood what is meant by Docker Compose and how Docker Compose is going to help us in order to manage the multi-container based applications, especially the applications which were developed by using microservice based architecture. As a part of this particular video, we are going to understand a project with respect to the real-time scenarios. That is what this particular video is going to focus on. We will be seeing a complete end-to-end -end project which we are going to implement by using Docker Compose and then we are going to see how that application is going to be managed when the application contains the multiple microservices. Let us understand the concept first and then I will be explaining you what exactly we are going to do as a part of this particular project. As a part of this particular video, we are going to develop the project by using the Docker Compose. Especially, we are going to work with the multi-container based application. Suppose, let's say we have a Netflix application. In the Netflix application, if you observe, we have different categories like movies, documentaries, doc documentaries, and then animations and web series like this. In the Netflix application, we have different categories. Now, what we are going to do in general, when we use the monolithic based architecture, whatever the application code that is related to all of these four services, we are going to keep it in the same container. Now, what will the pro what is the problem when you keep it in the same container? If the container gets deleted by accidentally, then the application will face the downtime. So that's why monolithic architecture we are not going to prefer. Instead, we are going to use the microservice based architecture. So here, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a separate container for movies, a separate container for documentaries, a separate container for animations, and a separate container for web series. Now, whenever an user clicks on a particular one, that particular application should be accessible. Let's say an user wants to access the movies related application as movies related page in the Netflix application then he should be able to see the movies related page. Similarly, if an user wants to access with the documentaries, then documentaries related page should get access. This is what we are going to do as a part of this particular project, that is project one. We are going to deploy or we are going to manage multiple containers for the same application by using Docker Compose. This is what exactly we are going to do it now. So here I have just given a simple index.html file for the Netflix application. I will show you how to modify that index.html file. And based upon the modification, I want to see the required categories of the application or the required APIs of the application. Now for these, first we need to have an EC2 instance in which Docker has to get installed. So first let us understand the step-by-step -step process. I have given each and every detailed step in this documentation. When I share this documentation, you can also refer to this particular documentation whenever you are working with. So first, you can launch one Amazon Linux EC2 instance and then connect it to that EC2 instance. Okay, and connect it to the EC2 instance. Once after you connect to the instance, make sure you are going to switch to the root user. Okay, make sure you are going to switch to the root user. Once you switch to the root user, you can install the Docker. Okay, you can install the Docker. So let me show you, currently I have connected to my EC2 instance and I have already installed the Docker software, Docker platform. So let me click enter so that you can see the Docker 25th version I have currently installed, right? So once after you install the Docker, let me switch to the root user, sudo su is the command to switch to the root user. If you do who am I, you can say I'm the root user. So let me clear the screen and pwd is slash home slash ec2 user, right? So now what we need to do, we know that whenever we want to create any kind of application, we know that we have to create the container. Now, if you want to create the container, we need a Docker image. If you want to create the Docker image, we need to write a Docker file. Okay, to create a container, we need an image. To create an image, we need a Docker file. So let us first write the Docker file. VI space Docker file name, that is a Docker file. Now, I have already given the content which is required for the Docker file creation. So this is the content which I am going to use for the Docker file. 
So let me copy this particular thing and let me paste it here. And then I'll explain you what are the things that I have kept inside the Docker file. So firstly, I'm going to pull the image. Which image I'm going to pull? Ubuntu image. I'm going to build the Docker image by using the Ubuntu as the operating system. So that's what I'm going to do from Ubuntu. And then I'm going to update. If there are any packages that need to get updated, it is going to install all those packages. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a server, which is known as Apache 2 server. Okay. I want to access my application. So for that, I'm using Apache server. So to run the Apache server, first I'm using run keyword. And then since the image is Ubuntu image, I'm using apt as the package manager in both cases. And then I want to install, install what Apache 2 hyphen Y. And once after this is done, I am going to create one index.html file. Okay, I'm going to create one index.html file. Currently, I have not created. I'm just mentioning it in the Docker file. So once after I create the index.html file, this file, I need to copy it to this particular location. Where is this location? This location is available in the Apache server, whatever we are going to install here. Inside that, it will be there, slash var, slash www, slash HTML. It is going to copy the index.html file from the current location to this particular location. Once after this is done, then I'm going to run the run the application by using CMD keyword. Okay, by using CMD keyword. So let me delete all these things which are there. So comments, I'm going to delete it. Comments are for your understanding. So if you want, you can keep it, but make sure they should be commented. Okay, if you have an idea about how to comment, just give hashtag symbol at the beginning of the line so that the lines will get commented. So currently I'm just deleting it because I don't need it. However, I have provided in the notes, you can have a look into the notes where if you want to understand in detail about what each and every command will do. Right, I have written the Docker file. So let me come out of the file colon WQ, escape colon WQ, you have come out of the Docker file. If you want to see the content, you can just give cat space Docker file and this is the content, right? Once after you create the Docker file, okay, once after you create the Docker file, then what we are going to do is we are going to create the index.html file. Okay, we are going to create the index.html file. So let me create the index.html file, vi space index.html. Okay, vi space index.html. So let me press enter. Now, what is the content that you have to provide here? The Netflix application related, the content or the code, HTML code. So I have already given that particular code in, at the bottom of this particular notes. You can directly copy that notes, entire thing of index.html file content. You can see this is the content for index.html file. So copy this entire thing and paste it in the file what I have created just now. So I'm just copying it and let me go here and paste it. That's it. I have pasted the content. Forget about what is this code and all. It is just a simple Netflix application code. And here, one thing that you have to understand is I will be showing the Netflix application. This will be the name of the application. If you want, you can change this code. Okay, if you want, you can change this name. If you want to give your own name, you can give your own name also. And as I was mentioning earlier, in Netflix, we have different categories like movies, documentaries, web series, animations like this. So the first category which I'm creating is movies. Okay, the first category which I'm creating is movies. So let me press escape colon w do w q. So I have currently created the Docker file and I have also created the index.html file. Now what we will do is we are going to build the Docker file. Okay, we need to build the Docker file. Let's see how to build the Docker file. So currently, what I'm going to do in the Netflix application, as I said, I want to manage a multi-container based application. The first container should be movies. Second container should be documentaries. Third container should be animations. And the fourth container should be web series. Right. I have created the index.html file and then copy the code provided at the bottom of this document and paste it. That is what I have done. And make sure the heading to be changed to movies because I want to access movies web page first. Right. I have done that also. If you do cat space index.html or vi space index.html, you can see this is the thing that I am talking about. If you want, you can change it to anything, whatever you want. Right. Press escape colon w. Right. I have created the Docker file and I have created the index.html file. Now let us build the Docker file. Okay. Let us build the Docker file. 
when you build the docker file what will happen a docker image will get created okay docker image will get created so if you want to build the docker file the command is docker build okay the command is docker build hyphen t movies colon version 1 so here what is this movies currently in my index.html file what is the name i have given movies i want to access movies code so i am giving the name of the image as movies colon version 1 how this movies colon version 1 will get then will get created by using the docker file which we have created some time back okay, we have created the docker file right by using this docker file this particular image will get created okay this particular image will get created so docker build hyphen t what does hyphen t represents a tag what is the tag i have given for the image version one that's a tag okay dot represents a current working directory so where is my docker file it is there in the current path so that's what i'm giving dot so press escape uh, press enter so that the docker image will get built once the docker image is built what will happen once the docker image is built a docker image with the name called movies will get created okay docker image with the name called movies will get created let's verify whether the docker image called movies has got created or not you can see currently the docker file is still building once it got built then only we can verify the docker images okay let us verify that so you can see the docker built is successfully happened happened now let me do docker images you can see the movies related image has got created okay when it got created eight seconds ago what is the size you can see and image id and the tag of the image right so now i have successfully built the docker file okay i have successfully built the docker file now what we will do is we are going to create a container okay we are going to create a container how will you create a container docker run hyphen itd we know that command let me clear the screen if you do docker images you can see movies image so let me paste the command docker run hyphen itd itd represents a detached mode okay interactive mode and detached mode and then hyphen hyphen name what is the name this should be the name of the container okay this movies is actually the name of the container hyphen p this is port numbers okay these are the port numbers so we have already discussed what is container port number and what is host port number okay host port number and container port number we have discussed by using which image i am building the container called movies by using this in this image where is this image from this image we have already created how this image was created by using the docker file now what i am doing by using the image called movies colon version one i am going to create a container called movies and for that movies i am going to access that container by using the port number 91 port number 91 is the container port number port number 80 is the host port number so let us create the container once when you click enter what will happen it will create the container with what name movies name okay by using movies name it will going to create the container so let me click enter you can see the container has got created now if you do docker ps what container you should see movies related container you should see can you see the movies related container what is the name of the container you can see movies let me clear the screen first and then i'll zoom out a little bit so that the entire thing will be seen in a single line so docker ps let me zoom out a little bit more docker ps right so what is the name of the container movies now this movies container is running on which port number port number 19 okay the movies port number is running a movies container is running on port number 19. now can i access my application yes how will you access the application go to the application i mean go to the ec2 console copy the public ip address of the instance and then go to new tab paste the ip address and then click enter now when you click enter will you be able to access the application it's not possible why on what port number the application is running on port number 91 currently have we opened port number 91 for the application we haven't opened so let's open the port number 91 for the application let me go to the security in the security click on the security group link now let me open the inbound rules click on edit inbound rule click on add rule port number is 91 okay that's the port number if you want you can give whatever port number you want but make sure the port number whatever you are mentioning okay the port number whatever you are mentioning with the same port number you should create the container okay with the same port number you should create the container if you give 
81 here. Make sure you also open port number 81 here. Okay, that's mandatory. Right. I'm going to give anywhere IPv4. Click on save rules. And once you click on save rules, the target groups or the security groups will get created. Now go to the browser. And then when I give colon 91, I'm giving colon 91. And then press enter so that we should be able to see the Netflix homepage. This is the Netflix homepage, which I have created on my own. It's a simple HTML page. Now here, what is the page that we want to access? What is the page that we want to access? If you see cat space windows index.html file, what file we are trying to access now, or what application API we are trying to access, movies related thing. Now, are we able to see the movies related application of Netflix? Are we able to see the movies related application or API of Netflix? Yes. So that means one container we have created for what? For movies API. Okay, one container we have created for movies API. Now let us create some other containers for some other APIs. Okay, let us create some other containers for some other APIs, right? So let's verify that. So how will you do that? Again, the process remains same. Let me clear the screen first and let me zoom. Now here, what is the next thing that I want to do after movies? I want to create documentaries. Okay, I want to create documentaries. So let us create the documentaries. Now, do I need to write a separate code for that? If you want, you can write. Otherwise, I have the existing code. Okay, I have the existing code. Where is my existing code? Index.html file. Click enter. That's it. Now go to the insert mode. Here you just change it. Okay, in the in the place of movies, you remove movies and you keep it as documentaries. Okay, you keep it as documentaries. Whatever wish, whatever name you want, you can keep it. Documentaries I'm keeping. Press escape colon wq. That's it. Now I have created the and I have updated the code. I have updated the code. Now, once after you update the code, what is the next thing that we have to do? We have to build the image. Okay, we have to build the image. How will you build the image? We know Docker build, that is a command. Docker build, let me show you that. Just press up arrow, you will be getting all the commands, whatever you have executed. Yeah, Docker build hyphen T movies. Are we building movies? No, movies code is already built. So let me write here it as a documentaries. So here, what is documentaries? It's the name of the image which I want to create. I want to create an image called documentaries image. Right, let me click enter. Right, you can see the documentaries image has got built. Now, if you do Docker images, what should happen? You can see the movies related image and the documentaries related image. Movies related image is having its own container. Now, let us create the container for documentaries also. Okay, let us create the container for documentaries also. How will you create? Again, docker run, we have the command. We have already executed, just press up arrow, you will be able to see the command. So docker run hyphen itd, that is interactive and detached mode, hyphen hyphen name. What is the name of the container I want to give? Movies container is already there. So let me create for, con create the container for documentaries. D-O-C-U-M-E-N-T-A-R-I-E-S. So this is the name of the container. Now, if you want to create this container, which image it has to use? Do I, does it need movies image or the documentaries image? It needs the documentaries image. So here also, we need to change the image as a documentaries. So remove movies and change it to documentaries. Okay, documentaries. You should give exactly so that only the image will get built. Okay, doc, documentaries colon one. Now, 91 port number is being used by which container? Movies related container. Now, can you run the same container? Can you run a different container by using same port number? It's not possible. So here we have to change the port number also. Instead of 91, I'll give it as 92. Okay, instead of 91, I'll give it as 92. 92 container is running on, is running for which container? Documentaries container. So let us create the container. Click enter. You can see the container has got created. Now, if you do Docker PS, let me clear the screen first and then I'll execute both. So Docker images, let us see. I can see two images are there. One is movies, other one is containers. Now, if I do Docker PS, how many containers I should see? One container for movies, one container for documents. Let us click enter. Now you can see there is a container for movies and there is also a container for documentaries as well. Right. Documentaries container is running on which port number? 92 port number. Can I access the application? Yes, but before that, we need to open port number 92. So click on edit inbound rules. 
and then go to add rule and the port number is 92 and then source is anywhere ipv4 click on save rules right now what we have to do copy the public ip address of the instance go to a new tab okay copy the entire public address go to new tab now here do i need to give 91 or 92 92 why because in 91 movies related code is running okay movies related api is running now in 92 what should happen i should access a documentaries let me click enter now can you see which content i am able to see or which api i am able to see documentaries within the same ec2 instance am i able to create two containers two containers one container is movies another container is documentary can you call this as a microservice based application microservice based application yes in the same ip address i am able to run the complete application in one ip address that is in one port number i am accessing movies related port in another port number i am accessing documentaries related port now can i do the same thing for others also yes we can do suppose let's say i'll go to vi index.html click enter now here in the place of documentaries what i'll do is i will delete this and i'll keep it as a web series okay i'll keep it as a web series or animations whatever you want you can keep i have given already the same things you can just work with this one okay you can just work with this one right so let's create the animations one okay let's create the animation so let me go with animations right so i have now when i access what application should i see animations application i should see or animations api i should see press escape colon w cube right now the first thing what we have to do we have to create the docker image how will you create the docker image how will you create the docker image docker build hyphen t what is the image name i want to give my image name now is animations so animations colon version one version one now the what will happen animations image has got created now if you do docker images you can see animations images available you can see it here okay right now let us build the container okay let us build the container by using animations image how will you build the container docker run hyphen itd hyphen hyphen what is the name of the container animations okay the name of the container is animations right and then animations container should run on which port number 92 port number is taken by documentaries now let us give port number as 93 i want the animations container to run on port number 93 now let me create that particular container by using which image animations image so remove documentaries and keep it as animations that's it now click enter so that the container will get created now if you do docker ps can you see the animations container also can you see the animations container yes so now three containers are there now can i access the animations container can i access the animations container yes click on edit inbound rules and then add rule which port number I want to open? 93. And the source is anywhere IPv4, save rules. Now what I should do, go to your new tab again. Go to your new tab and then place it and 93 I should give. When I give 93, what should I see? I should see animations. Let me click enter. Now you can see it's an animations related page. Now similarly, can you do one more thing? Can you do one more time? Yes, we can do. Let's say I will create one more page called web series. So vi index.html. So change the code. That's it. You all have to do is change the code. So web series. I'm just keeping it as web series. Right. Press escape colon wq. That's done. Okay. Now what we have to do, but we need to build the Docker image. How will you build the Docker image? Docker build hyphen t and then image name. What is the image name? Now it is web series. So web series colon version one dot. Right the docker image called web series got created let's verify that docker images you can see web series image is available now can i create a container by using web series image can i create a container yes so let me give the container name first what is my container name web series okay web series and then port number 94 i'll give 93 is taken by animation so and here image is web series right i have given that now let me create the container the container also got created. You can see the anime web series container is also available. It is running on which port number? 94 port number. Now let me go to a new tab. Go to the, sorry, first go to the EC2 instance, edit inbound rules, open the port number 94. So click on add rule, 
and then give the port number as 94. Source is anywhere IPv4, and then save rules. Go to a new tab, copy the IP address, go to a new tab, and then paste it here. Instead of giving 93, give it as 94. When you give 94, what should I see? I should see web series. Now, in the same application, if I give 91, I am accessing movies. If I give 92, I am accessing documentaries. If I am giving 93, I am accessing animation speech. If I am giving 94, I am accessing the web series page. Now, can you say it's a multi-container based application where all these containers are available? Animations, web series, movies, all these containers are available in which, how many instances? Only one instance. In the same instance, okay, in the same instance, let me clear the screen. In the same instance, I have four images. By using these four images, I have created four containers. Since I have created the containers, I'm able to access all the application APIs. Now, can you call this as an, can you call this as an multi-container based application, which we have deployed by using Docker? Yes. But the thing is, what is this project all about? This project is all about Docker Compose. Okay, this project is all about the Docker Compose. But currently what I have done, I haven't used any Docker Compose so far. I have just used the Docker. I have just used the Docker concept. But what is the problem here? The problem is every time I have to create an image, I have to build the container, and then I have to access it. It's a time-taking process. So here I have only four containers. In real time, you might have some 100 containers also. You might have some 100 containers, 50 containers, 80 containers. In that case, do you repeat this process? No, it's a time-taking process. So what we have to do, we have to simplify the process. Okay, we have to simplify the process. So what is Docker Compose used for? Docker Compose is used to manage the multi-container based application. Okay, Docker Compose is used to manage multi-container based application. Now what we will do is we are going to use the Docker Compose concept. I have written that only. So this is all a manual work. Every time I have to create an image, I have to build the container and then I have to access the container. Now this is all the complex work and manual work. Now what I have to do, I have to automate the process. Okay, I have to automate the process. If you want to automate the process, we need to use the Docker Compose concept. We need to use the Docker Compose concept. So we have already discussed what is meant by Docker Compose. It is just a brief overview about what we have already discussed. Now let us work with the Docker Compose concept. Okay, so first we need to install the Docker Compose. If you want to install the Docker Compose, we need to execute this particular command. Okay, we need to execute this command and a couple of other following commands. I hope up to here, whatever we have discussed, we you must have understood. I have just created the application. I have deployed the application by creating the image. And then I have created the container by using the image. And I am able to access the application. But this is all manual work. I want to simplify within one stretch. I want to create all the containers at a time. In that case, what I will do, I will use Docker Compose. That is where I am going to write a Docker Compose file. Okay, in the Docker Compose file, I'll write only one time and I can execute as many times I want. Okay, I can execute as many times I want. Right, so first let us install the Docker Compose. Okay, first download the Docker Compose, sudo curl. This is the command to download and install the Docker Compose. So let me copy this one. Before that, let me clear the screen. So I'm just downloading the Docker Compose. Why I'm working with the Docker Compose? Because we need to simplify it. I need to, I don't want manual work. I want to simplify it. So let me check the file. It should be a binary file. So I'm just checking that file by using this command. Yes, it's a binary file. And then I'm going to give the executable permissions for that file. Okay, I'm going to give, let me do ls. You can see, I'm, I currently I have only Docker file and index.html file. So let me give the executable permissions. That's done. If you do ls, you can see that, right. Now let us verify whether Docker Compose has got installed or not. So how will you verify? Docker Compose hyphen hyphen version. Okay, Docker Compose hyphen hyphen version. So there is some command error. Let me check what exactly is the error. So this particular error that is command not found, it is because of one particular thing I want to inf I want to work with. So that is what I have worked with. So you can see Docker Compose hyphen hyphen version. It is showing some error that is command not found. 
then what i have done is i have just listed whether docker compose file is available or not in this path whether it is available or not i have just executed ls space the path docker compose file is available and then i have given one permission the sudo permission and then i have executed the docker compose you can see the docker compose version which is currently available the same thing i have also given in the notes you can see even when you execute the first time, you will see the error here and then follow the next comments. So I have given that also when I executed Docker compose version, I can see command not found. That means it's an error. So, and then follow the next comments. These two commands you execute and then you work with this one and then you verify whether Docker compose is available or not. Okay, got Docker compose version has got successfully installed or not. Right, once this is done, then we need to work with the Docker compose file. So currently, do we have the Docker Compose? Yes, you can see Docker Compose version, version 2.10.2. Now what we will do is we need to write the Docker Compose file. So let me write the Docker Compose file first, and then I'll explain you what exactly I'm doing it here. Now vim docker compose.ym, that's the file name I'm giving. Go to the insert mode and paste it. Let me paste the copy this everything, and I'll explain you that in some time. Paste it here, that's it. Now, usually in the Docker Compose file, we were discussing about that. In the Docker Compose file, how many components are available? How many components are available? There are four components that we have discussed, which will be there inside the Docker Compose file. We have discussed in the previous video. What are those four components? The first one is known as a version. The second one is known as a services. The third one is known as a network. And the fourth one is known as a volumes version, services, network, volumes. Currently, what is my Docker Compose version? I have just given it as 3.8. Okay, I give it as 3.8. If you want to downgrade, you can do that also. There won't be any issue. And then after version, what should be there? Services. In my application called Netflix, what are the different services that are available? One is movies, another one is documentaries, another one is animations, and another one is web series. Since four services are there, Four services are there. I have given it as four services. Okay, I have given it as four services. Right. Now, first service is movies. Okay, first service is movies. Movies related service should use which Docker image? Movies colon version one. Okay, movies related service should use which image? Movies colon version one. And movies related API should run on which port number? 91 port number. 91 is the container port number. 80 is the host port number. Can you change this port number called 91? Yes, you can change. Whatever port number you want, you can change. Similarly, I have the next is API, which is animations. This animations API should build on which one? Should build on which one? By using animation. So here I need to change that. So give it, I'll give it as animations. Okay, I'll give it as animations. Instead of documentaries, I'll give it as animations. That was an error. So I'll give it as animations. Animations container. Okay, animation service should create by using which image? Animations image. And animations is running on port number 92. And then documentaries, docs represent documentaries. It should build on which image? By using which image it should build? Documentaries. So let me give the name documentaries, right? And then documentaries image should run on which port number? 93 port number. And then the next service is a web series. Web series container should get created by using which image? Web series colon one, version one. And it should run on port number 94. That is what I have done. So what about network and volumes? Network concept we haven't discussed so far. So after Docker compose concept, the next thing is networks only. There I will be talking about in detail. That. And related to volumes, we will see that volumes related concept in the Docker compose file in project two. Project two will be discussed in the next video where I'll be talking about how to include volumes also. Currently, just focus on services and versions. Now, before clicking enter, I mean, let me press escape, colon, WQ. First one, movies is running on 91, animations is running on 92 port number, documentaries is running on 93, web series is running on 94. So come out of it, right. Now, if you do Docker PS, you can see the four containers are there. Okay. Now, if you do docker or cat space docker compose.yml file, sorry, cat space docker compose.yml, you can see 
here movies related code is running movies related api is running by using movies colon version 1 similarly animations documentaries and web series right i have created the docker compose file now what it should happen when i build the docker compose file automatically the docker file should get connected i mean this docker compose file will connect to the docker file and it is going to build the docker images and then it is going to create the containers okay and then it is going to create the containers what will be the containers name whatever the service names that you have given that will be the container name let us let me show you that so once after you give that just execute this command docker compose up hyphen d what is this if you want to run the docker compose file in a detached mode hyphen d represents a detached mode so let me run the docker compose file once you run the docker compose file there will be one problem that you are going to get let me show you that click enter right you can see it is telling that failed it is showing some error error response what is that error you can see port is already allocated which port port number 91 92 93 94 port numbers are allocated earlier in the previous thing before doing the docker compose thing i have already allocated this port numbers now can you work with the same port numbers no you cannot work with the same port numbers either you have to change the port numbers or you have to change the port number in the docker compose file any one thing you have to do any one thing you have to do that is what i have given error is seen because as already we have created the containers using the port numbers 91 to 94 it is showing that error so what we have to do either we need to change the port numbers or remove the old containers which one is easy can i remove the old containers yes you can remove can you change the port numbers here yes you can change the port number instead of 91 92 93 94 you give it as 71 101 201 like that you give and make sure to open those port numbers in the security groups of ec2 instance since i have already opened those port numbers in the security group of ec2 instance i am just deleting the old containers okay i am just deleting the old containers so how will you delete the old containers the command is docker kill okay docker kill dollar and docker ps hyphen a hyphen q that's a command to remove all the old containers let me execute that one let me clear the screen first let me paste it and then click enter it is going to kill all the containers okay it is going to kill all the containers but error is being seen because those containers are in the running state okay those containers are in the running state so let me first remove the containers instead of killing docker rm the containers has got removed now if you do docker ps you can see there are no containers now if you do docker ps hyphen a there are no containers when you do directly kill it is not going to kill because they are in the running state okay now we need to remove it so i have removed this one okay so when you do docker ps and docker ps hyphen a there are no containers that are run now what we need to do we need to run the docker compose file okay we need to run the docker compose file how will you run the docker compose file docker hyphen compose up hyphen d when you do this what will happen the containers will get created what containers movies application movies animations web series and documentaries let us verify that click enter you can see it is creating the containers it has created the container you can see what are the container names you can see animes movies web series documentaries are the containers got created or not in a single file It, it's just a five minutes of work. I will write the Docker Compose file and I'll execute the Docker Compose file. When I execute, what happened? Immediately, the four containers has got created. Now, have we simplified the manual work or not? Yes, we have automated the process. How we have automated the process by using the Docker Compose file? Okay, by using the Docker Compose file. Now, can I access the containers? Can I access the containers? Yes. How will you access the containers? by using the same ip address let me delete this one let me close all the previous tabs which i have used let me just give me a minute i'll just close all of the previous tabs which i have used right so now what i will do i will just open go to the instances go to the details copy the ip address go to a new tab colon i mean paste the ip address colon which one 91 i'll give if i give 91 what should i see movie related application can you see that if i give 92 here in the same page i am giving 92 you can see animations if you give 93 what should i see i should see documentaries if i give 94 i should see web series can you see 
by using the same application, I mean, same IP address with different port numbers, are we able to manage the containers, different containers? Are we able to manage the different containers? Yes. I'm just giving different port numbers, 91, 92, 93, 94. When you change the port numbers, automatically what is happening? The API is also getting seen. A new container is going to show. So based upon the port number that you are going to give, that particular API you are going to access. Okay, that particular API you are going to access. So here, what you need to understand is when we run the when we have the multi-container based applications, we are running the multi-container based applications by using the Docker Compose file. Okay, by using the Docker Compose file. So whatever you are going to configure in the Docker Compose file with the same names and with the same port numbers, you will be able to access the application. That is what happened. So this is how you can do the simplification or you can do the automation of managing the multi-container based application using the Docker Compose file or the Docker Compose concept. This is one of the projects. This is commonly used in the real-time scenarios. Make sure to understand this project on a large scale. Try to practice it, practice it as much as possible so that you will be understanding on a better way. Right Now, once you create the container, if you want to delete the container, the command is a docker compose down. Okay, docker compose down. Let me delete the containers. I don't want these containers. If you delete the containers, what will happen to the application? Application will also go down because containers are getting deleted. If you want to delete the container, but save the data inside the container, what concept we are going to use? Docker volumes that we have already seen. Okay, docker compose down. You can see the containers are getting stopped. Once the containers get stopped, then are we able to access the application? No, we will not be able to access the application. Like this, there are different containers I have given. Now you can see the Docker containers has got removed. If you do Docker PS, there are no commands. If you do Docker PS hyphen A, you can see there are no commands. Now, if I go to the application and if I reload, will I be able to access the application? No, I will not be able to access, you can see. Since the container got deleted, what, what happens? The data inside the container got deleted. Since the data inside the container got deleted, what is happening to the application? Application is also not reachable. Like this, there are a couple of other containers also. If you want to work, you can work with them. If you just want to stop the containers, you can stop it. If you want to restart the containers, you can restart by using this command. If you want to pause the containers for some time, you can pause it. If you want to unpause, you can unpause. Like this, you can use whatever commands that you want. Okay, and this is an additional concept. If you want to have an idea, you just have an idea. Suppose, let's say in real time scenarios, I need more containers. Okay, for movies, let's say more traffic is there. So, what I should do, I should run more containers. So, if you want to scale up the containers, okay, if you want to scale up the containers, Docker compose a scale and then the container name. You give the container name and then give the number of containers. How many containers you want to run? Let's say five containers, give it as five. So what, what will happen? Five containers for movies will get created. Extra containers will get created. But the problem is these containers will not have the port numbers. By default, when you scale the containers, they will not come up with the port numbers. They will not come up with the port number. If you want to use that way, then we need to go with the concept called Docker Swarm. Okay, we need to go with the concept called Docker Swarm. That's basically an orchestration platform. So that's basically an orchestration platform. Again, this Docker Swarm is not something that is commonly used in the real-time scenarios. We have the advanced version for Docker Swarm, which is Kubernetes. So as a part of this lecture series, we are not going to discuss anything related to the Docker Swarm, except the concept of Docker Swarm will be discussed, not in a theoretic, not in a practical way, because Docker Swarm nowadays nobody is using. It's all about the Kubernetes. It's all about the Kubernetes. Right. So this is all about this particular video where we have seen how to deploy an application and how to manage the multi-container based application. In the next video, we are going to see how to work with the Docker Compose by using the application and the database. I will show you how to make a front-end application and how to access the data that is coming from the application in the database or from the database. That we are going to see it as a project too. Thank you.